Oh my goodness, look at this fantastic fleet. Ten ships, ladies and gentlemen. Ten ships are all you need to win the game. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Brit, and today you join me in Stellaris, a fantastical, lovely space strategy, real-time strategy game. Yes, yes, it's got all of the fantastic things I like, excluding tea. Yes, this game... <sighs> Even though it's said in the future, there's no tea. What are you saying, Stellaris developers, that we're not going to have tea in space? What's the point of going to space if you can't drink tea there? My goodness. These people don't even understand the idea of interspace colonization. I mean, the only reason we want to get on Mars is so that we can terraform it to grow tea. Why else would you need a space empire? But anyway, what are we doing in today's video today? Well, you know what? I think it's time we hand over to our friends at Spiffco to explain what's happening here today. Have you ever felt that Stellaris was just quite simply too easy for you? Or maybe you've only just stumbled across friends that you can finally play Stellaris with? Or how would you like to get rid of all of those friends and see all of your friendships fail forever? Well here today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be demonstrating to you how you can ruin friendships forever and have fun whilst doing so. Thanks to our friends over at the Apple Pie Squad of Spiffco's research division, we've been able to hone a special set of Stellaris exploits which will give you the edge not only in single player, but also multiplayer. My favourite exploit would of course be the fact that you can have the ability to use console commands in a multiplayer game. Now some would say being able to access the in-game developer console and choosing the game to be an absolutely stupendous win might be a hint that Stellaris is not a perfectly balanced game. But today ladies and gentlemen, we'll be proving otherwise. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you are sat back, you're relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of tea in hand, and you know what, if you're a super duper special person, a exceedingly special, fantastic human being, then hey, you might have already given the video a like, oh, and you might have even gone down into the comments section to talk about how fantastic your tea is, or just write a 700 page document as to why Spiff, you probably shouldn't be releasing exploits for a game which has a very big multiplayer community, as you might just accidentally break it. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care about the consequences, as is the joy of every single classic British person ever. Also, today's video is 100% not sponsored by Yorkshire Tea, the single greatest beverage in the entirety of the galaxy. 150% of members of the Cult of Tea rated Yorkshire Tea to be the single greatest tea they'd ever tried. So why not go online today and grab yourself one of these fantastic, lovely golden beverages? Mmm. Ah. Damn, it's good. Now, on our first step of exploiting Stellaris here today, what we're going to be doing before we actually jump into a new game of Stellaris, now what you want to do is, in the main menu of Stellaris, and this works to be honest with most Paradox Interactive games, you want to open up the console, this lovely little console here. And you see, in this console, you can run commands, but of course, a command in the main menu isn't really going to make any difference to an actual game, so even though you could say, type in, I don't know, energy 1000, it does nothing because there's no valid player, you're in a main menu. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing an Iron Man game of Stellaris. Now, a game in Stellaris in Iron Man means you physically can't even open up this console. But what if there was a way around that? Well, allow me to introduce you to the Tweaker GUI settings of Stellaris. Now, using the Tweaker GUI commands, you can open up these fantastic five little boxes here. Instant Anomaly Research, Instant Colony, Instant Move, Instant Survey, and a Pop Happiness Slider. As you can imagine, this is semi-broken, but of course it doesn't really make a difference because this is the main menu What's the point of having all of these if we were to turn it on here? It probably won't be in the game Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's just go about a normal game of Stellaris and pretend that those aren't there Now instead of actually making my own species I'm just going to grab the United Nations of Earth here and mess about with a couple of their ethics You see so what you want to do is go into the traits of the United Nations of Earth and basically for their entire Population as you can see they're going to be nomadic and adaptive very very nice. However, we don't really need adaptive, that can go, and if I'm honest, nomadic isn't really necessary either. Wasteful as well, that's fine, we can keep that there. And here we have my much better creation of the United Nations of Earth. As you see, we've decided to make them wasteful and deviants. Deviants are normally a bit of a pain when it comes to building an empire because they're slowly going to drift from your government and they probably won't be happy. However, it doesn't really make a difference anymore because we have a pop happiness slider. Or at least the game doesn't think we have that, but trust me, we do. Anyway, so that's perfect. 
Like that's all set up, I'm basically done and ready for a game. So we're just going to drop ourselves into a fantastic normal game of Stellaris and we're also going to set it to Iron Man mode. So as you can see, we're bam, this game's eligible for achievements. This in the eyes of Paradox Interactive is a perfectly vanilla Stellaris game and exactly how they expect Stellaris to be played. Anyway, so we're in the game and as you can tell, we are in a fantastic Iron Man game. How do we know that? Well, because if we try and do energy command, it says console not available in multiplayer or Iron Man. Well, it's not available, ladies and gentlemen, but that's not going to stop me. Nothing can stop me, ladies and gentlemen, not even Rihanna Keeves. So now that we're in the game, what you want to do is turn on Instant and Lomni Research, Instant Colony, Instant Move, Instant Survey. And also one of my other favorite things to do is if we go into our lovely colony, where is it? Here it is, Earth. Now, as you can see on our fantastic, lovely little home world, there is a fantastical little system called Pop Approval Rating. Now, this is basically the happy happiness of all of the people on your planet. As this is our home world, it is basically impossible to get it beneath 65%, but on any other planet, your happiness will basically default to whatever this slide is set on. As you can see, it's currently at minus one. However, if we crank it up to 100, as you can see, the happiness of the planet goes up to 100%, and also the stability of the planet raises from 65 to 85. As you can see, well, bam, you can take it down, you can take it higher, the choice is yours. I mean, look, you can even set the pop happiness to 14, on the planet and suddenly stability is super low and, and, and a rebellion is going to happen. But of course, we're the player. We don't want that. We want to crank it up to 100. Wabam, perfection. Look at that. Lovely. No crimes happening. No unrest is happening. Everyone's nice and happy. Now, of course, you might notice we also selected instant move and instant survey. Well, what does that mean? Well, it basically means that if we select our science ship here, we can tell our science ship to survey this system. Now, this process would normally take around about a few minutes, but uh, it's just going to survey it immediately. And the reason why is because the ship, instead of actually spending time to move to the unknown system, teleports there immediately, then teleports from planet to planet immediately, researching everything, and it's a glorious success. So we're just going to hop around all of these brand new systems, surveying everything, and we're bam, we've basically discovered everything surrounded us. Ooh, what's this? An archaeological dig site? Oh, this is fantastic. An archaeological dig site is a fantastic sign because basically we can exploit the hell out of those and that's also another one of the exploits I'll be showing off today ladies and gentlemen so we're just going to quickly drop down a little station around this system so that no one else can take our fantastic dig site but before we go any further ladies and gentlemen I would like to propose an idea to you I often get asked can you please exploit Minecraft can you please make Minecraft is a perfectly balanced game with no exploits and ladies and gentlemen okay fine it is a absolute meme to make Minecraft videos at the moment in 2019 so I will will make one Minecraft video. One, seriously, only one Minecraft video. That's all you're getting. But I will give you the single greatest exploit Minecraft has ever seen. And I will do that provided this video reaches a fantastically difficult 30,000 likes because I do not want to make a Minecraft video if I'm honest. My entire channel will be jeopardized. People will look at the channel and go, oh goodness, he's joined the Yogg's cast and now he's making Minecraft videos. We know where this is headed. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I put it up to you. If enough of you actually do want to see me break Break Minecraft in a very spectacular way, then so be it. That's what I'll do. Anything for your entertainment, I guess. And to kind of demonstrate just how fast this whole surveying malarkey is, I've queued up one, two, three, four, five systems all in one go, and we're bam, you release your scientist. That's one system done. Here comes the next job done, and then another. Oh, we've discovered some aliens. Fantastic. Now I must say, with these effective cheats slash exploits, you are able to win almost any game. For example, you see Alpha Centauri here. Maybe you want to colonize it that's great so what you want to do you want to schedule a lovely little colony ship send it over to Alpha Centauri it'll take a little while to get there but don't worry it'll be there soon as soon as it's constructed I'll demonstrate to you how it's a little bit broken now you see in this game basically for some reason I discovered something quite strange when it comes to using these tweaker GUI commands they basically affect both you and the AI which is why you want to basically only have them active when you are the only person in the game which is why you basically only want 
to have them activated when you are using them so as not to give the AI a ridiculous micro advantage. So for example, here we have it. We want to colonize our system. I doubt any other AI is currently trying to colonize the system. So what you want to do is turn on instant move and instant colony. Immediately you fly on over to Alpha Centauri and we're bam. It's a colony already. It's instantly a colony. Look at that. It's got population down and everything. And then you just want to turn off instant colony and instant move. There you go. Back to normal. This is a normal game now. You just happen to colonize the entirety of Alpha Centauri in the space of 13 days, which is perfectly balanced as always. And now at the end of this month, we're finally going to get automated exploration protocols. And this is where things are now going to get slightly awry. You see, we love our scientists. They're fantastic. But what if we could just have them do everything so much faster? So what you want to do is turn on instant survey, instant move, and set all of your science ships to automatic exploration. And now we are just going to watch them destroy the entirety of the galaxy. And away they go. So an automatic server, you no longer have to micromanage them, they are simply going to start teleporting around the entirety of the world and as you can see, the game just doesn't know how to comprehend it. It says the science ship is over here despite the fact that the science ship is surveying systems over here and now it's surveyed this system here. I don't know what's happening anymore. What a mess, we're discovering everything. But yes, don't worry ladies and gentlemen, this is perfectly fine apparently. Game says this is allowed. And because they've done so much surveying, just look at their experience go up. Here is Dong Leong. <laughs> what a name! Uh, his experience is climbing up ridiculously quickly because he is just researching everything. Although the only issue is we are getting bombarded at the top of our screen by system surveys. Oh my goodness. He's already level 7. He's level 7 and we're only 12 years into the game. Oh goodness no. Game please. It's Iron Man. You shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> Oh, I love this game. It's great. Well, we can send this science ship back here to the excavation sites and just have him do the excavations for us. There you go. This science ship is now underway. He's busy doing excavations. And excavations are very special in this game because they can be glitched out to an extreme degree. But don't worry, you basically lose one. What do you do? You just hire another and tell them to explore the galaxy. And they're going to do absolutely fantastic things. So yes, here we go. Brand new Ellen Burton. A couple of moments ago, they're only skill level 1. Now they're skill level 3 and they're just going to be teleporting around the galaxy. Now the advantage of having your science ships like this is if they ever end up in physical contact with anyone they can teleport out of there immediately. Ooh, here we go. We found a beautiful bubble. What's happening? It was clear that a civilization had indeed flourished here recently. Ooh, right. Okay, let's keep discovering some minor artifacts. Yes, this is going well. Going very well. I just love the fact that they'll suddenly survey a system over here and then teleport down here and survey another. Now, maybe we should get a couple more scientists just running around, gaining a ridiculous quantity of skills. One more science ship. Let's go, friends. Anyway, hello there, Dikolsky. You are a brand new scientist. Go and teleport around the map surveying systems. Oh, my goodness. Ellen Burton is level 7. Okay, right. Ellen, come do this. Excavate the archaeological site. And you can do it ridiculously quickly. My goodness. Oh, what a fantastic thing. Oh my goodness. Dikosti is now level 6. What a guy. Right, let's have him stop exploring and just have him excavating now. We want everyone excavating for us. Right, keep digging. Good stuff. We're getting quite close to some breakthroughs. Oh, this is lovely. Just a ton of scientists doing lots and lots of exploration. But I mean, already we're 15 years into the game and we've discovered half the galaxy. Yep, I mean, at this point, if we find somewhere that we want to colonize or just take any of these exploration sites, we can do. So there we go. We've done two our archaeological dig site. Sadly, we don't really have anything to show for it, but it's all okay. Don't you worry, ladies and gentlemen, because we can just go down here and build a star base on the next one that we can do. <laughs> yes, we have the ability just to teleport around all of them. Anyway, now that we've managed to grab this system, we might as well also do another excavation on it. So there we go. Congratulations, Ellen Burton. You need to do more excavating. Now, sadly, I can't really demonstrate to you guys the exploit that I really want to show off to you, which um, basically requires you to have a dig site which gives you, say, an actual object like especially ships there I know there's a few dig sites where you can get like a massive colossal titan sized ship now basically if you do get a dig site like that fantastic and when it comes to actually getting it out of the ground what you want to do is wait for the game to autosave at the end of the month if you're in an Iron Man game then this becomes a little more tricky but at the end of the month basically when you click on the box where you continue your dig site or you get the final product from it or whatever it is if you do that then congratulations basically Basically, what you want to do is wait for the autosave, then spam click on the accept 
setting or the like OK button, and then you will get a duplicated quantity of whatever the effect was. For example, if we managed to time the autosave correctly with our last dig, where we were given a increase in defense army health by 20%, if you manage to get the spam click off on it perfectly, then you can increase the defense army health to say plus 200%, meaning your standard planetary guards are physically impossible to defeat. There are so many fantastic wacky modifiers like that in this game which allow you to just cheese it to unknown levels of cheese. Huzzah! I've jumped into the midpoint of the video when you were least expecting me to tell you all about the fantastic beverage that is Yorkshire tea, mm, and even Yorkshire tea gold, which comes in a lovely fantastic little box. Look at it, it's majestic. Now of course, why am I here reminding you to drink Yorkshire tea? Well, it's because you made it roughly halfway through the video. Hats off to you, well done. You should give yourself a pat on the back. And you know what you deserve? A nice refreshing break. Go grab a cup of tea, a nice cold drink, whatever you need to get you through this terribly warm summer heat. Honestly, for this day and this day alone, because it's so warm, I'm going to let you have a beverage that will cool you down. For this day and this day alone, if you're watching this video, you, you are allowed to drink tea, but you're also allowed to drink hot chocolate. Yes, if you're having a horrifically hot time and you don't want to drink a nice warm cup of tea, then you have to drink hot chocolate. And that's the only alternative. You need to melt yourself to death either to hot chocolate or a nice lovely leaf broth, but none of that bean juice. Blah, disgusting bean juice. But hey, if you're drinking it, maybe you're drinking it in your own Spiffco tea mug. Hats off to you. Look at you. Plug, 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 plug. Yes, don't worry, I'll plug the merch. Anyway, you know what? I've taken up enough of your fantastic time, so let's get back into this video as we're about to start dialing this exploit from a number 10 up to a number 14,276 million. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, what I'll now show off to you is how to create a fleet which has the ability to defeat every single thing in the game, but of course, costs you almost nothing. Now, whilst I wait for our brand new completely broken fleet to be built, we're going to just be surveying the entirety of the world. And as you can see, oh my goodness, Stellaris is not happy. Oh no, this is not going well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what if I told you that the most powerful fleet in the entirety of the game is genuinely just 10 Corvettes? That's all you want. 10 perfectly normal Corvettes. They're fantastic. That's all you want. So, you see, this game has a very unique way of basically organizing armies. You see, we have the corvettes themselves, and then they have a little number. This is their military or fleet power. Now, their fleet power is basically 386, although it displays as 387. That means in a fight, they're basically going to be good against anyone less than that number, but they're probably going to lose at anyone higher than that number. The more ships you have, the higher that number is. The better the ships you have, the higher the number that is. Now, for some reason, that the lovely scientists at Spiffco can't even explain, this number can be manipulated in magical ways for crazy results. So for example, if you have 10 lovely little corvettes here, what you want to do is just hit transfer ships and then transfer them all. And there we go, they transfer themselves, that's fantastic. Then you want to do it again and transfer ships, transfer all the ships, merge all the ships. Oh my goodness, I'm having some pretty wacky graphical issues here at the moment. Apparently this one corvette's having, I don't know, some kind of major strobe party. So there we go. What we've just done there, ladies and gentlemen, if you did didn't see it was basically we selected our entire fleet whilst the game was paused we then slammed down on an auto clicker transfer ships as fast as we could and that's resulted in us having this very strange situation where our fleets aren't actually displaying their combat power it's a little bit wacky and if we merge them together we end up with this fleet here which has no visible military power you will notice that over here it says it has a military power of 386 and over here it says 386 but really what we have here is an invisible fleet. Now this invisible fleet can be used in a number of ways. For example, you can use it to sneak behind enemy lines, they won't be able to see it. But most importantly, this enemy fleet, because it for some reason does not display a fleet power in the map, is physically unable to be defeated. I have no idea why this is the case, but for some reason the fantastic people at Paradox discovered that if they just allow this fleet to exist, it can't die. Now I will demonstrate how this basically works by just simply declaring war on everyone around me and having them come and fight my tiny little fleet which shouldn't really exist. So for example with this fleet here, because it doesn't display any attack damage, you can send it into the AI, it can't be defeated, it will always win. You can send it into a fallen empire just, I don't know, two years after the game starts and you can defeat a fallen empire with just 10 corvettes. Only 10, that's all you need. 10 single corvettes and you can defeat the strongest empires this entire game has to throw at you. Does this work? 
work in multiplayer? Of course it works in multiplayer. Your friend has a much bigger army, don't know how to deal with it, doesn't matter. Just build a fleet of 10 random corvettes, sit them in your home world, they can do nothing. You've won the game. What a crazy system we have. But of course, how effective is it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it a try. So what we want to do is we want to go to contacts and just declare war on everyone around us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a claim on the enemy and now I'm going to hopefully be able to go to war with them. It'll be fantastic. So we go, well, bam, declare war. Now they're going to basically hopefully be able to win this war, but alas, it doesn't matter because I mean, we have our fantastic invisible fleet over here. So we're going to wait for them to basically make their way over here to try and fight us. Now I've turned on instant move, so their fleet is going to have a nice little advantage. As you can see, their fleet is just going to run around, mopping up all of our systems nice and slowly. Here we go, their fleet is in Alpha Centauri now. They should be able to take that out, no problem. And now we want to get the invisible fleet of our own over to the lovely corner with Alpha Centauri, and hopefully we'll be able to fight their fleet when it comes in. Here we go, their fleet is teleported in to our fantastic homeworld. Whereabouts is it? Oh, well it is currently engaging our fleet apparently. Oh, and also our little starbase. Now it will be able to defeat our starbase, but how will it do against invisible ships? Well, that's what we're about to discover today, ladies and gentlemen. So, in come our invisible ships, and let us watch a very strange battle occur. So, our invisible ships come in, and they begin fighting. But, as you can see, the invisible corvettes don't appear to be taking any damage at all. Why is that? Well, someone might say, well, they're focusing fire on that, uh, that one starbase. Well, actually, no, they're not. Uh, they are technically shooting the starbase, but even if they were shooting the starbase, they would still be attacking the corvettes. But as you can see, no. They've done, what is this, 7,000 damage in total? 4,900 to armor? And these corvettes are all at full health. And look, they're going to grab the station now. The station's going to go down. Well, bam, it's theirs. And we won the combat because <laughs> I don't know how that even worked. <laughs> But the combat wins because the game doesn't really know how to process the fact that the enemy fleet is floating around our system and we're doing damage to it, yes, albeit very slowly because we only had 10 corvettes, but they were busy shredding up our starbase whilst our fleet was just sat there and our fleet took zero damage. Zero damage, ladies and gentlemen. It physically couldn't take anything. Oh my goodness, look at this fantastic fleet. 10 ships, ladies and gentlemen. 10 ships are all you need to win the game. Oh my god. Goodness. Bugger me sideways with a tea bag, ladies and gentlemen. What on earth is the features we're seeing here today? And of course, where is my fleet? Where is the fleet? Here it is. It's just floating around here. Good. Well done, fleet. You did a really good job. Very proud of you. But of course, the only issue with this is when you move to a new system, your fleet sadly gains its numbers back. Oh, that's not fun. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, there are quite a few ways around that. Now, in the same fight, of course, remember, they did manage to take our lovely little soul station. So how are we going to be able to take our station back? Well, well, if we were to engage in a one-on-one -on -one fight with our fleet over here and their station, it's a little bit risky. We might lose. So what we're going to do, just have the game paused and we're bam, transfer it all out again. Didn't work that time. That's fine. You merge them up again. You transfer the ships. That one's working a bit better. Good. So you merge it up again. Transfer the ships. Merge them all around. Good. Yes. Perfect. And then merge. Glorious. Lovely. So there we go. We've managed to transfer all of our ships into yet another invisible fleet and we're going to send it into the lovely star base. Go. So so now here we have it, we're engaging a hostile station and we've just teleported into combat and my goodness we are absolutely shredding it to pieces. And come on station, are you going to shoot back? I know you have guns, you do have the ability to fight back, yet for some reason you can't because the ships don't exist. <laughs> oh look, they've even sent in a fleet to come and help out. Here is a fleet of 806 ships has come in to help out and are they going to fight back? Come on guys, look you can even see that they're there, come on, <laughs> you're just going just gonna to stand there. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> they can't process it. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is how to win any combat in Stellaris. Any, with just 10 corvettes. That's all you need. That is all you need. There we go. Fantastic. That's their fleet gone. They don't know what to do. They're gone. Now we just want to take out that lovely little star base. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what a system. If any of you haven't played Stellaris before, you shouldn't be able to have a fleet which is outnumbered basically three times by the enemy fleet power and win. That shouldn't happen. But here today, ladies and gentlemen, 
gentlemen. Every day is a victory for the fantastic fleet of Spiftopia. My goodness. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We've managed to survey the entirety of the galaxy in 25 years, create a fleet which physically can't be destroyed, as well as also demonstrate how with the power of an auto-clicker, you can cheese basically all the brand new archaeology expansions. But ladies and gentlemen, what if I told you we could dial this up to spicy number 11 and take some of our magic into a multiplayer game? Well, let's go. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, what we're about to go into is a multiplayer game. You cannot use console commands in a multiplayer game. Or can you? So here we go. Have we got any games running which we can hop into? No, we can't. Okay, well, we're going to have to host our own game right now then, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, our very own game. All right, so I'm going to host it up, give it the name of Test, and find some willing subjects on the Discord. Now, it's, it's nothing major, Minty, you know, it's just um, a button which allows you to force every other player's planets to rebel, uh, the ability to teleport units around the map, the ability to colonize planets instantaneously, the ability to create a fleet which is indestructible and invincible and also only costs you five energy a month, that kind of thing. Nothing major, nothing major. Just completely imbalancing the entirety of the ecosystem of Solaris. All right, so we're in the game at the moment, and Alf, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly set all of the happiness of all of your people it should be around about like 80% I'm guessing your pop happiness so I'm now gonna unpause it and you should maybe see your happiness lower what is your pop happiness on yeah it's still a 58% average right okay so basically what we've discovered here is that basically all of the tweaker GUI commands are on the client side but they affect my game so um, I have the ability to have instant movement whereas you don't so um, what I can do is I can teleport all of my units around the map instantly. Rose, could you try and at the moment move, say, I don't know, science ship around? And how long does it take you to move from one system to the next? It takes 93 days. Because um, for me, it's an instantaneous jump. What we've discovered here today, ladies and gentlemen, including Alf and Minty, thank you for your support, is that all of these fantastic tweaker GUI commands can be used in a multiplayer game, excluding the fact that they only affect the client side. That basically means that everyone else in the game won't be affected by my crazily broken survey move speed and instant anomaly research, meaning I will be the only person who has the ability to teleport around the map, Alf won't, and you can just win games like that. You genuinely have the ability to now teleport behind people, Fantastic. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been the Spiffing Brit. Today, I've shown you how to have an invincible ship. I've also shown you how to basically cheese everything in the game. And my goodness, who doesn't love a good exploit? So there you go. If you want to ruin as many friendships as you have, which is probably, I don't know, all five of them, then make sure to load up a game of Stellaris, hop on with your friends, and have a fantastic time. Also, did I mention how active this game has a multiplayer community? This multiplayer community of Stellaris is mental. Look at all the people playing. I mean, we're, we're midweek at the moment, and there's so many lobbies open. So hats off to all of you in the Solaris multiplayer community. If you're still regularly playing this game, well done. Give me a shout. Say hi. And of course, if you want to see Minecraft, and if you think you know what I'm going to be exploiting in Minecraft, then hey, hop down to the comment section. Make sure to give the video a like. It would massively help me out. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is everything I have for you today in Solaris. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, as always, a like is greatly appreciated. And as always, a huge thank you to all of our fantastic and amazing patrons. Each and every one of you, mwah, you're brilliant people. My goodness. I've made sure to tell the Queen about your fantastic hardships and support for the brand new up-and-coming British Empire 2 Electric Boogaloo Edition. It's going to be one majestic sausage indeed. And if you're wondering what video you'd like to watch next, ladies and gentlemen, then look no further than this one on screen now. It's been handpicked by myself to be right up your alley. Trust me, if you enjoyed this one, you're gonna love that one. And hey, if you're also new here, make sure to subscribe. We'd absolutely love to have you in the community, one of the nicest communities around. Basically, everyone's just told to act like a very polite British gentleman, no matter who you are, and everyone gets along absolutely fantastically. So go down into the comment section, spread some joy, make some people's days, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.